You can adjust the audio level in EDIUS by using the rubber bands for a clip, but you can also use a dedicated audio mixer. If I just click on the toggle audio mixer display button here, it'll come up on screen. You can access this by going to the view menu as well. It's just listed along with the other tools. Now the audio mixer represents each of the tracks on the timeline in EDIUS as a vertical control. So here, for example, I've got my one VA track that's got nothing on it. My 2V track, of course, won't be represented because it has no audio. And I've got my 1A, 2A, 3A, and so on. I've also got a master output volume. Now, the controls here look a bit busy when you're not familiar with the audio mixers. But if you've seen one and you understand how it works, you'll automatically recognize any other. Just running down from top to bottom, I've got pan control to send the audio from that track left or right. And that gives me a number readout when I make adjustments. I can mute that entire track or I can solo it, making sure that all the other tracks are turned off for sound. I've got a fader control that allows me to adjust the audio level over time if I want. And that gives me a dB reading at the bottom. I'll just uh, resize this a bit. We don't need the slider there to view it. And then at the very bottom, I've got these various modes. And I'll just run you through what these modes do because once you know what they're for, it all kind of makes simple sense. First of all, let's start at the top with track. If I have the control set to track, then the adjustments I make are overall flat level adjustments for the entire track. And this works pretty well, for example, if you organize your timeline very carefully so that maybe all of your music is on one track, all of your voiceover on another, and then you can just say, well, let's go down to about minus 10 dB for the music. That kind of works fine. Just undo that with my uh, control Z. Then equally, if we go to clip, we get the same result, but the clip adjustment is for a clip by clip basis. So I've got a clip selected here. I've got my edit line over it. And if I make an adjustment, you can see the red rubber band line moves up and down the clip as I adjust the fader. This is the equivalent to me holding down the shift key and clicking on the rubber band to get a flat level adjustment on the clip. Again, this is for the whole clip segment or at least when I'm using the shift key, it's for this section of the segment. But if I'm using the fader control on the mixer, it's the whole thing. You'll see that all of the level adjustments move relative to one another. So it's pretty handy. Next down, I've got off, of course. This will do nothing at all. And then we get on to the classic latch touch right controls that you'll see on audio mixers of this kind all throughout the industry. To explain what these do, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. I'm going to start with right. If I choose right, and position my fader, say, down here. I've now got the option of pressing play on the audio mixer and riding the audio by grabbing the fader and moving it up and down to assign keyframes. Now, this is frankly a bit easier if you've got an external mixing desk, which is automated and connected to your machine, because you can ride multiple faders at the same time and move them in different directions. But at least you can do it one by one with the mouse, or you can use these three ganging controls to connect faders together into groups. So that's one group, that's another group. You can have up to three different ones. And then any movement you make to one will affect the others in the same group. I've just got one bit of audio here, so I'm gonna stick with that. All I need to do is press play and start adding keyframes. And click again. And it stopped. Now it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? If I zoom in to the timeline so we can see a bit more clearly what's happened there, you can see that EDIUS has created a very kind of smooth following of the adjustments I made with my fader. And here's where the other modes come in. So write means that any adjustments I make will be written to the timeline and will create this audio level adjustment. What it also means is that if I have this set to write mode, if I press play on the mixer again, it will just overwrite from the very beginning. It'll let me have a starting point for my keyframes. So I don't have to press play and then quickly grab the mouse and move it over to the fader. I can position it where I want it right away. Touch mode will follow the existing keyframes until I grab the fader. And then when I let go, it'll go on following the existing keyframes. So let's have a look at that. I'll click back a bit and press play. And you can see the fader moving on its own. It can be difficult sometimes to grab, but if I grab this and pull down, there you can see the keyframes being written straight away onto the timeline. And it goes on following afterwards. So that's touch mode. 
Latch mode is just the same as touch mode, except that once I grab it, the fader will stay where I leave it. So if I press play, you can see the fader's following the keyframes. I'm going to let it go up, and then I'm going to pull it down and let go. And now you can see having let go, it's still writing keyframes at that level. So these all kind of make sense. They're the different ways in which you might want the interface to behave. And one last thing to mention about the audio mixer, well, you can see right away, of course, that the mixer has levels for each of the tracks, which is pretty handy. And if I click down on the little menu here, it's not easy to see. It looks like an icon, but it is a menu. I can toggle between peak levels and VU levels. And in fact, I can even apply these kinds of adjustments to the master output, which is just great. If you're in a hurry and at the very last minute you realize the entire project needs to be a little bit quieter, you can just adjust the overall output level for the entire project. Another thing to note here is that the pan control is often grayed out. That's because you can only apply pan adjustments on a whole clip-by-clip -clip basis or on a track basis. You can rubber band the pan controls, but if you want to do it with the audio mixer, it's only on a whole clip-by-clip -clip basis. So that's using the audio mixer in Edius 6.